this looks like. <gasps> yeah, it's headquarters. Central command. We were right below it. So they've been there this whole time. I never would have guessed they were beneath the command center. So maybe it's not just the Fuhrer. The entire military might be involved. Exactly. We're all getting on the same page here. There is some good news in all of this. Your body exists. You saw it? My body's still in there? In your mind, maybe. On some level. Oh, what's that weird little cat doing in here? Uh, well, you know that little girl? Are you serious? She's inside your armor? Brother, stop yelling! That's where she went. And while you're at it, will you That's put smart. on some pants? Hey, what's the hold up? Yes, please. Get a move on! <laughs> Episode 29, Struggle of the Fool. We had Advance of the Fool, now we have Struggle of the Fool. Wrath will take over babysitting you now. Right this way. Wrath? All getting on the same page. <gasps> and we're a Mustang. Wrath. Is Fuhrer King Bradley? Yes, I know, right? Crazy. What's going on? Where should I begin? Yeah, they're so far ahead of you guys. Go ahead and take a seat. The guards left us alone. There are three of us and only one of him. He's only got one sword with him. Remember your training assessment? I only joined the military because I thought it might help us get our bodies back. But now, now I know what the state alchemist program really is. You're using it as a way to recruit your sacrifices. Cool, this is a key moment. I've been sort of wondering when this would happen or waiting for this. When Ed would sort of have to face his involvement in the military. He has always seen it as something that is just for him and his brother. But there's no going back to that. He's in too deep now. About this scene, how humiliating is this? How humiliating is it for your enemy to sit you down calmly and tell you just to give up? Like, they think they've been playing chess, but they're not even on the board. They're just, they're, I don't know, they're playing Scrabble or something. By fighting... Bradley now, they're being like impolite. You know what I mean? It's super weird. He's showing them mercy. I don't know how they go forward from here. Well, I'm not gonna let you use me to accomplish your sick goals. I resign my title as a state alchemist. Your plans are gonna fail. I swear on my own grave that I'm gonna stop you. I'll warn the other state alchemists. I'll tell them- What was that lovely young girl's name again? Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. It's Winry Rockbell. <laughs> You stay away from her! Just leave her out of this! Roy's in a mood right now. If we're going to continue to serve under your watch, will you please allow us to keep searching for a way to get our original bodies back? Please, sir. I don't see why not. As long as you don't interfere with our plans. And what do you have in mind, Colonel? You wouldn't do something so petty as to quit the military. Good question. I'm on a short leash here, and I still find that preferable to giving up. And I still have my ambitions. Your plans don't change that. So I'll hang on to this. And I'll retain my rank, too. That's fine with me. We have nothing honest. more to discuss. Very honest, all around. Uh, just one moment, Alphonse. <laughs> Is that all? That's all. That was close. Oh, hey, Colonel, <laughs> help us out. Have you got any change? I want my money now. Just give it. Isn't that rich? That's all you got, really? It's apparently more than you've got. Sure, whatever. No. See ya. Hey. Sorry, Colonel. Don't you have Looks things to discuss? Where are you better. going? I feel like this is important. Dumb. Yeah. Where's Armstrong? I haven't seen him in a while. Lieutenant! <gasps> what the heck? That's so weird. I just like There's summoned him. Troubling you, Colonel. Uh, you seem slightly discomposed. Well, just how do you expect me to appear? I had hoped a young woman would be standing there, not a mustachioed muscle man. Colonel. You should be happy. Lieutenant. I was getting worried. She waited a long time. Someone once told me to never give up, no matter what, and once was all I needed. Just don't ever tell me you'd wished you'd run when you'd had the chance. All right. It's too late for regrets. What is Armstrong's role in all this, I wonder? Have you noticed anything weird? Like any suspicious people following you? Well, Ed. What is it? You're creeping me out. <laughs> What's creepy? It's just... Well, it's actually pretty rare to get a call from you. And I've never heard you worry about me. This is weirder than a snowstorm during the summer. <laughs> well, fine! Thank Don't read into it too much. Worry. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> he does care, though. Thank you. It means a lot. Uh, sure. 
you're certain everything's okay, right? Yeah. Okay. Bye. Oh, sweet. I think she's still safe for now. Yeah, but she's know, probably being watched. That kind of desperate worry they're gonna manipulate you with. Ah! Ling! No, it's greed. Still, your pal asked me to bring this to you. Ling did? Hey, wait, Ling! It's still greed. <laughs> Metal nice. They shot at Roy Mustang. Full metal alchemist. This poor guy, Dr. Marco. Who is that? Did you come from outside? I can help you if you're injured. Why don't you come down here? Is everything all right outside? It's safe to come down. The guard won't be back for a while. Let me help you with your injuries. I'm actually a doctor. This is an interesting alliance, and Dr. Marco knows some stuff. You're not the one known as Scar, are you? Tell me who you are first, and what are you doing down here? <laughs> My god! This must be fate! I'm the alchemist responsible for the extermination of your people! That is not the way to phrase that, but okay. The young lord. Isn't he with you? Uh, he's not. About that. But he's still alive. I've got a sort message of. from him. It says he found a philosopher's stone. The young lord has saved our clan. Um. And now we have to return to our country. We've got to get the news to our people. Yeah. Listen to this. It's royalty. The kid was a prince of Shang. The funny thing is, he let me take control. He thought I could make him emperor or something. What an ambitious little brat. I spoke to him once about politics. His naive theories on leadership were amusing. He said a king's duty is to his people. As if the people actually mattered when ruling a country. The fool. Just look where his allegiance to the people has gotten him now. Yeah, this is sort of crystallizing for me here. Because of humans and their weaknesses, their many weaknesses, they deserve to be ruled. They deserve to be subjugated. And humans are not capable of thinking for themselves. And so the way to gain control over them is feeding them things that rile their emotions and lead them to conflict. And the conflict makes them weaker still, and then they can be subjugated or used for whatever. And while there isn't this sinister or monstrous presence in real life, like we don't have humunculi, I do think there are a lot of people who are interested in pushing negative emotions for a certain goal. And those emotions often include things like other people want to destroy you or destroy your way of life. I think one of the themes of the show, and also I think something that applies to real life, is that we have to sort of safeguard ourselves from that a little bit. Where we don't only focus on the negative aspects of humanity and we don't reduce groups to the lowest common denominator of that group. And where we're somewhat more skeptical about the motives of other people. Who would lead us down an emotional path that leads to destruction? We focus so heavily on leadership, right? But I think that if we think a bad leader can destroy us, it's already too late. Because the answer is not to choose a good leader constantly to protect ourselves, the answer is to make it to the point where we're resilient enough that no leader can destroy us no matter what. That even bad leader is ineffectual. Even if you have Ling today, you're going to get Bradley tomorrow. You know, the point is not to choose the right leader always over time. The point is to make it so that we're free enough that no leader can have that effect, that negative effect. Even though I don't think it's a sinister motive, I think there's a social force towards consolidating power of groups. I think the only counter to that, the only way to resist that urge is to start looking at how people use emotion and how people use fear to drive power for themselves and their causes. Like we've seen over and over in history that it's really easy to be at each other's throats and destroy each other. It's much harder to focus on the positive aspects of humanity and not be victims of emotional pushes and to become better individuals ourselves. I think that's the antidote. And I think that's part of what the show is getting at with the whole, like, we'll keep fighting no matter what. We're not going to give up. We're not going to give in to despair. We're not going to give in to hatred of humanity. Typical human. Shut the hell up! Don't underestimate humans. Exactly, yeah. Vera Bradley is a homunculus? It can't be. The only thing I've ever wanted to do is protect my fellow countrymen. So he didn't know. The only one. That's sort so of a relief. Many soldiers have put their trust in the military. Aw, he's such a pure heart. This is the truth. You could resign, Major. With your disposition, I'm afraid you'll suffer otherwise. How can we fight a war like this? It's wrong! Major! You're disobeying an order! You're dismissed! Call this is also a huge relief. Alchemist. I collapsed in Ishval. I couldn't bring myself to stay and fight. The military's methods were ghastly. I could see their malignance. But still, I chose to turn away and run when I should have fought to protest their actions. 
that decision. It's haunted me every day since then. It makes me sick that I abandoned my beliefs. And now that I face the military again, I have to fight. I couldn't live with myself if I ran away now. Damn, that's awesome. I loved every second of that. First of all, it's a relief to know that he had that struggle, that he had that struggle of conscience. I think that's important, you know, for our love of him and also for what we expect of him, knowing he's such a kind-hearted guy, right? Then I think that even what he did, even not fighting, just fleeing, took a tremendous amount of courage. It's unrealistic to expect every single person to fight the ultimate fight to the death for something they believe is right, especially if it surprises them, right? Especially if they just find themselves in that situation. Few people could pick that up and actually execute it. Like very few people would fight against the military, even even knowing that it's against their, their principles. First of all, because I feel like people don't really even have defined principles like that. But secondly, because there's almost nothing more terrifying than going against your world, going against your, you know, the crowd that you're in, because you'll just die. Like, that'll be the end of you. Like, he would have fought and died. But I love how this time he's using that experience as inspiration for fighting, because I think that's how it goes, you know? That's the benefit of having negative experiences. That's the benefit of failure. Seeing how that feels and vowing never to be the same. And in that way, the experiences can be can be gifts if used in that way. Like if he continued to run and hide forever, then it would, you know, it would be a shame. It would be a waste. But seeing that helped him refine his values. Like he feels the shame of that. Truly, I think that, you know, one of the hardest things to cope with in life is the knowledge of your own evil. It's not the evil others do to you. It's the later realization of terrible things that you've done and carrying that. And I think one nice way through that is using it as inspiration to be better. So it's really easy to root for Armstrong in this situation. And how do you plan on handling all of this, Colonel? The Fuhrer asked me that. I told him I wasn't going to quit or give up my ambitions. <laughs> the Fuhrer seemed like he was downright eager to reveal his true nature as a homunculus to me. Yeah, he was very candid. Seems they're testing me. I have to admit I'm honored. You seem surprisingly Interesting. Calm. I don't know. It was a very calm conversation. It's just, well, it's similar to how I felt during the battle with lust. I've been called a human weapon and a monster. Maybe I deserve it, but I can tell you this much. I never feel more human than when I'm fighting real monsters. Interesting. Uh, I don't think you should be up yet. It's uh, Mei Cheng, right? Mei? <laughs> oh, they are rivals. I also know why you're in this country. To obtain immortality. Too bad you won't live to see me get it. <laughs> you won't even leave this room, princess. Don't we have bigger problems? Hey, just hold on a minute. Yeah, I'm without. I don't know what this about, but you can't fight like this. Quit trying to interfere with the affairs of our country. My wounds aren't going to slow me down. Is that so? Well, neither will mine. What the hell do you do? <laughs> <with your laughs> there we doing? go. Knock some sense into them. Quit trying to interfere with the affairs of our country. I don't care about <laughs> the affairs of your country. Dumbass. There we go. Doing what Al couldn't. Jeez. Huh? I found this on the floor. Huh? Hmm. So that's where it's been all this time. Where else do you keep your photos? And who are you to decide what I do with my own stuff? <sighs> Can't stay mad at Al. We had a couple of local alchemists helping us with repairs this morning. All they really ended up doing was looking foolish, though. They came strolling in here like they were the very best. And the next thing you know, their alchemy wouldn't work. He said this morning was when we were underground. Mr. Alchemist! So it wasn't just that room. It was a certain period of time. How come Scar and that little girl were able to use theirs? What does that mean? Could their alchemy be different from ours? I mean, it is alchemy history. It makes sense. I'm gonna have to make them teach it to me somehow. Maybe I can use it to get Al's body back and take down that bearded bastard. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've got to get this to the lieutenant. Hmm, interesting episode. Another ending scene. They forced me to follow through with their plans. I made a stone for them, and I used the lives of countless Isvalans to do it. And now, Baby they're gluttony. forcing me to cooperate on an experiment that's likely to result in another genocide. I beg you! Please stop it! You have to kill me, please! Please take my life! My own death is the only form of revenge that I have! No. Your appearance here, right now, you're like a god to me. <laughs> Tell me everything about Ishval. I want to hear the entire story. What did you use my people for? You'll tell me all of it. Give me the truth before my right hand destroys you! 
That's what he wants. Well, that's interesting because that will align Scar more with their purposes, with Ed and L's purposes and Roy. He's been trying to take down the state alchemists, but they're not the enemy. Yeah, so interesting episode. I love Roy's optimism about everything. I love how he's just, he's having fun. He's having a good time. It's just a new challenge, but it's a big challenge. It's Roy though. It's Roy. We know that he'll figure something out, right? Hopefully he learned his lesson about acting too quickly or assuming victory too early because that was obviously framed as a character flaw for him. But now he's been through that experience and he, you know, he was lucky enough to live through it thanks to the humiliation of Bradley's mercy. And then also we continue with the implication that there's a lot more to alchemy and that maybe there are some secrets that alchemy history contains that Ed could benefit from. And hopefully that brings new insights into the whole process too. Also, maybe most exciting is Armstrong joining the battle. And now we know a lot more about his feelings and his convictions. I've been waiting for that. I've been waiting to see where, where he is and where he fits in. And I was hoping it would be good. And now I see that it is good. It is very good. It's nuts, man. This whole show is nuts. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. And then also things like not happening. Like things de-escalating. It's so weird how that resolved itself. It resolved itself so peacefully, which is in its own way terrifying. Like it's terrifying that Bradley and the others just don't even need to be concerned. In many ways, the way it was resolved reflects what father said about not even wanting them to die because they're insects not even worthy of attention. I mean, villains say that all the time, right? But usually it's a bluff and usually it turns out not to be true and the, the heroes overpower them. But like in this case, it's true. It is sort of a waste of Bradley's time. Like, they did nothing. They did nothing. They did all that just to walk out of the office casually nursing their wounds. Their emotional wounds. It's very exciting stuff. I, I can't wait for the next episode. But it'll have to wait. So yeah, I'll see you next time for episode 30.